Great. Uh, thank you, Ayrton. Uh, my name is Kurt Dusak. I'm a solutions architect with GitLab. And today, uh, myself and Teo are going to be presenting on utilizing GitOps workflows with GitLab and Anthos. So, yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Theo Schemle. I'm a solutions architect uh, based in Paris for Google Cloud. And I work with everything DevOps, GitOps, Kubernetes, etc. And I happen to be uh, a fairly heavy GitLab user. Yeah, so today we're really just going to give a, a high level overview um, of Anthos and GitLab and how we can use them together to really deliver uh, a smooth and consistent GitOps experience. And so uh, Theo is going to give us a demo of seeing that in action um, with a, a sample uh, project that he's put together that's running on GitLab. Uh, and then we'll talk about some key takeaways and what this means and, and setting that up and then really how to get started, who to reach out to, how to get some more uh, information on implementing this yourself, finding a partner to give you a hand in implementing it. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get uh, an overview in, into uh, what GitLab and, and, and Anthos and how they work together. Um, and, and really at, at the fundamental level, there are a few building blocks that we're putting together to create this solution. And so we're really starting with containers. And really that's the smallest unit um, of this puzzle that we're going to, that we're piecing together. And that really your, your code and your application logic is going to live within a container. And that is going to help you make uh, workloads portable, make them be consistent, easy to version and, and easy to deploy to infrastructure. And the containers basically roll up into Kubernetes. And, you know, if you're using Kubernetes currently, if you're, if you're leveraging that, um, that Kubernetes provides a lot of orchestration um, and management of your clusters. But a lot of times as your application can grow and as your infrastructure expands, Kubernetes becomes um, a whole other platform and system that needs to be managed and administrated and configured. And also, as you start to spool up multiple clusters, depending on environments or um, needs around deployments, internal, external, again, we're just adding complexity onto something that already has a lot of individual moving pieces if we're talking about a broad application. And so Anthos really serves as a high-level control plane and orchestrator that runs multiple spans multiple clusters. And this allows you to treat your clusters as individual resources. And then you can deploy your application to different cloud providers or an on-prem Kubernetes uh, cluster. And then you're still able to provide policy enforcement, configuration management across those different clusters. And that way you're having a unified and consistent experience, really regardless of what infrastructure you're using uh, whether that's AWS or Google uh, Cloud en environment, um, or really whomever you're deploying to. And so really what ties all of those things together is GitLab. And GitLab allows you to have a, a really a complete DevOps platform and it's delivered as a single application. And this gives you consistency across your operations um, and collaboration because it allows all of your teams to log into a single application um, and to really collaborate in the same place. They're not um, you know, performing deployments in one application, but managing code in another and defining uh, policy and um, security configurations and, and yet another application. And so by bringing GitLab together, you're really bringing everyone into the same place um, so that your product and your project managers, your security teams, um, QA engineers, infrastructure teams, software developers, they're really all collaborating around the same information. And so really, if Anthos is a unified platform for enabling uh, your organizations to, to manage your clusters, GitLab is really the tool that enables these teams to build the automation and the workflows to really deliver uh, and to configure those clusters. So <clears throat> we talk about GitOps. So let's talk about why do we want to use GitOps? What, what do we get out of utilizing GitOps? So there's a couple of different components uh, that we're getting here. So we get reliability. Once we've defined a configuration or a security policy, that lives in Git and it can't be changed um, without whatever approval process you'd like to put around that. And there's no secret changes or stealth changes. Everything has to be logged to a commit. And this keeps things um, really tightly um, secured and it reduces the amount of human intervention. 
And we also want things to be portable. So we want really anyone who um, should be able to modify this to be able to modify it, or at least view what the policy is. We want to have transparency around what our security posture is, what our configuration approach is. So that way users, they may not necessarily be able to change it, but they should know what it is. And that will allow them to um, stay within the bounds of what the organization is trying to achieve from a, a development perspective and also reduce risk in terms of developers um, going off and doing something that's not best practice or something that was undefined and potentially breaking builds or, or reducing security um, across the application. And also we want familiarity. Uh, if we're already using tools like Git um, and YAML and we have automation built out, you know, we don't necessarily need to introduce a whole other toolkit um, just for managing configurations and security. Implementing our, our configuration files in Git is an interface that many of your developers are already comfortable with. They already know how to utilize commits and merge requests. And so this is just gonna take advantage of tooling and processes that they're already comfortable with and that they already have access to. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to Teo. He's gonna jump in and give a, a overview of the architecture and run through his demo. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Uh, so in, in, in the demo that I'm going to show you, uh, we are using three main components. The first one uh, is GitLab, of course, and that's the, at the core of, of everything. And every user interaction that uh, we are going to have, uh, almost every user interactions that we're going to have is with, with GitLab. Uh, the next component that we're going to use is Enforce Config Management. So Enforce Config Management is uh, a, a product that's part of Enforce, and it's a GitOps-like product to manage your configuration and policies. So when I say configuration and policies, I mean some things like um, uh, network policies in Kubernetes, which are software-defined firewalls, uh, or uh, RBAC policies, which are like access control for your clusters, etc., etc. And Enforce Config Management reads those configs and, and those policies from a Git repository, and that's in uh, in your uh, in your GitLab instance, and applies those to your Enforce clusters or your Google Kubernetes engine clusters. And really, the main people interacting, interacting with that Enforce Config Management repository are the platform administrators. They're not the only ones, but they are going to be the, the main ones. And they're going to be able to approve merge requests from developers, from secu the security team, et cetera, et cetera. The second, uh, the, the, the last tool that we're going to, to, to show you uh, is called uh, Application Delivery Manager, or, uh, and the CLI is called AppCTL. I'm going to use both of those words. And AppCTL, sorry, Enforce Config Management is really GitOps for config and policies, and AppCTL is really GitOps for applications. Um, and with AppCTL, you have one application repository, and that's one that you already have today. Okay, that's where your, your source code lives, your Python, your, your Golang, your, your Java, whatever. And you have uh, another repository called the deployment repository. And that's where all your Kubernetes configurations for that, uh, that, application, that application are going to live. And AppCTL, I'm going to dip bit, uh, a bit uh, deeper uh, in, into that, but AppCTL makes the link between those, those two repos and are, is going to build those Kubernetes configurations and is going to help you apply those configurations uh, in a very controlled way on your Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes clusters. And, um, and really here, because we're talking so much Git, GitLab is at the core of everything and we're using it to control access to those repositories, to uh, implement approval workflows, and also to run uh, test builds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, a bit of a deeper dive on Enforce Config Management. Enforce Config Management really has three sub-components. The first one is called Config Sync and is actually available for free outside of Enforce. Config Sync uh, reads configurations and policies from a, a Git repository, in, in our case, GitLab, and applies those configuration and policies to a Kubernetes clusters. And those configuration policies can be, uh, as I said, like either like RBAC, um, uh, network policies, uh, everything that, um, that you need to run your platform in, in, in general. 
Then you have another component called policy controller. Policy controller is a managed version of an open source project called Open Policy Agent Gatekeeper. And that's really a web, admi uh, a web admi an admission, admission webhook for Kubernetes, meaning that you can write policies uh, with, for policy controller that say, okay, I want all my deployments to have a specific label. I, I want to prevent every pod from being run <coughs> with the privilege mode, for example. And policy controller is going to look at every change happening on your Kubernetes cluster, and it's going to approve or reject, reject, reject those changes based on your own policies. Um, and those policies can also be uh, defined and stored in the same Git repository. So really, you have one part configuring for applying stuff, and policy controller for controlling what's what's getting applied. And the last the last component that I'm not actually going to show in that in the demo is called config connector. And config connector makes the link between all of that and the broader GCP. So you can define GCP resources such as a Cloud SQL instance for MySQL or Postgres, for example, as a Kubernetes custom resource. And config connector is going to create and manage that uh, resource. For, uh, for you based on that Kubernetes custom resource. And of course, because it's Kubernetes custom resource, you can apply policies on them based on policy with policy controller. So Enforce Config Management uh, is a globally available product. It's part of Enforce and, uh, and those different subcomponents have various status and are available as different pieces elsewhere. The second, uh, the second part of the demo is uh, the GitOps workflow for applications. So that's with AppCTL. And, and the, the workflow uh, can, be, can seem a, a bit complex, but it's actually not that, not that com keep complicated. So as a developer, you're going to develop your application as usual. Okay? And you do merge requests, and you run tests, and you do code review, like everything as normal. And when you want to release a version of your application, then you're going to tag your application repository with the tag that you want, uh, 1.2.3, whatever. Okay? And once that's done and you want to release uh, your application to a pre-production environment, in our case, it's called staging, but you can call those environments however you want, you run that command appctl prepare staging. And what that does, it takes your, uh, it, it, it takes your base, Kubernetes configurations that live in your application repository. We use Customize. Customize is an open source tool for that. And generates the full Kubernetes configurations for that environment staging with whatever customization you want, like a, like a specific uh, parameter, a specific uh, environment variable, uh, a specific tag, whatever you want. And it creates uh, a merge request for that environment in the deployment repository. And in that merge request, you're going to see the full Kubernetes configurations as it's going to be deployed. And you can review that and approve that merge request. And once that merge request is approved, you can run AppCTL apply staging, and AppCTL is going to actually deploy your application in staging. And, and finally, once you want to deploy to production, you're going to run AppCTL prepare prod Okay, but th this time you're going to add from end staging. And in that case, what it's going to do, it's going to take the version that's actually uh, currently running in staging and prepare the production environment from using that version, but with all the other customization uh, that you want for the production environment. And once again, it's going to create a merge request in the deployment repository for that, that you're going to approve. And once it's approved, you, you can actually apply those changes to your production environment. So just to make things a bit more visual, uh, this is, uh, those are like diagrams of your two Git repositories uh, for that whole workflow. So on the left, once again, we have the application repository and that's really a normal application repository where you have commits, you have merge requests and you are going to tag things. And in that repository, you have your source code and you have basically the templates for your Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes configurations. When you run AppCTL prepare staging, uh, we create a merge request on the staging branch of the deployment repository, okay? Using the Kubernetes configurations from the tag, the last tag that you created, okay? 
And once you merge that merge request, that's uh, this, uh, this red commit here, you can run AppCTL apply staging, and that's going to deploy that. And when you run AppCTL prepare prod from env staging, then you create a merge request on the production branch, okay, using the version that's currently in staging. And once you merge that uh, merge request, you can apply, apply it. Okay, so all of that can be a, a, bit, a bit complex to understand in theory. So um, it's really time for, for a demo now, um, and uh, hopefully it will make things uh, clearer. Um, do you have my, uh, my demo screen live? I think you do. Please tell me if I don't. Yep, so, it looks good. Okay, so we are starting with the Enforce config, config management part, so the configs and policies part of the demo, okay? On the left here, I have two uh, Google Kubernetes Engine clusters, one uh, for prod and one for staging. They're currently in US Central One, and you can see that I have like, different cluster size, et cetera, et cetera. On my local uh, terminal here, I get, uh, I have access to those clusters. In that case, I have access to my staging cluster with two nodes, yeah. okay? Um, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is this repository. So you can see it's hosted on GitLab. It's called Enforce Config Management, okay? So that's the repository where all my configuration and uh, policies live. And in that repository, you have different directories that you can use for different things, but a few that I want to point out are this one, cluster registry, that's where you list all your different clusters because all your different clusters are going to read from the same repository. You're not going to apply the same thing to all clusters. And that's why, for example, on my prod cluster, I put a label saying that this is in the environment prod, and then I can differentiate between environments or anything I, I want really. Um, and then I have the namespaces directory, and that's where I'm going to de uh, define namespaces that are going to be created everywhere I want. And so, for example, here I have an L world namespace. It's a really simple definition, okay? It's kind of namespace with the name L world. And because that file already exists in my Enforce Config Management uh, repository, um, that namespace already exists on my, on my cluster. You can see it here. The hello world namespace. Yes, my application is an hello world application because I'm not really a, a very good developer. So on that uh, GitLab repository, I already have a merge request created. Okay, so let's, let's get there. And that merge request, so let's look at the changes in that merge request. And you can see that I'm adding a constraint. So constraint is really a parlance for a policy in policy controller of type case required labels. And that means that I want all my deployments, okay, in the namespaces hello world and ACM tests to have a label, a label called team whose value matches that, that regex, okay? So I want basically all my deployments to have a team label and as a platform administrator that allows me to know from which team uh, each deployment comes from, uh, which if you have many application teams, that can be quite useful to, to know. And because uh, this is a GitLab merge request, we can actually use GitLab CI to test all of that. And we have, uh, we have a pipeline that has already run because I created that merge request a couple of days ago. And you can see that I have a, a few steps here. The first one uh, is really uh, checking that the Kubernetes configurations that I want to apply are like syntactically valid and that I have the right API objects in my clusters to actually create all of that. And that succeeded. If we take a look at the last uh, stage, validate, which also uh, succeeded, really what we are doing here is that we, we are taking all the configs that we have in that repository, all the policies, and which we are checking that our configs are actually compliant with the policies that we have within Enforce Config Management itself, which is the first step of actually being compliant. And running that test here allows you to catch policy violations directly during the, the creation of those configs and those policies before they actually reach any cluster, be it dev or staging or whatever. It allows you to, sh to shift all of that left, to shift all, all that security left, and to have much faster uh, iterations uh, on, on, on those. So let's get back at the merge request. 
So you may have noticed that Enforce Config Management is a fairly powerful product, okay? With Enforce Config Management configured the right way, you can actually deploy configs and policies across all your clusters at once. And obviously, you want to control how that's done. So for example, when you create a new policy or modify an existing policy, you want different teams to weigh in on that. So for example, you may have, you may want to, the platform team to have a say in that. You may want the security team to have a say in that. And that's where uh, GitLab really shines also because for example, we are going to uh, use the approval features of uh, GitLab to make sure that everyone who needs to approve that change is going to approve that change. So in our case, I just put uh, Kurt and myself as uh, approval, uh, approvers but really you can add the security team and the infra team, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to approve and merge. So if I take a look at my uh, constraints, it's here. We start, there's no such constraint in, in my cluster, but in a few seconds, you're going to see it appear because I just merged on my master branch and, uh, and, and Enforce Config Management constantly reads from that, uh, that repository and applies it. And you can see it, it just appeared on my cluster. Okay, so now my policy saying that all deployments need a team label is, a, is applied across all my clusters at once. Uh, so I'm going to change hat now. I was kind of a platform engineer uh, up until now, and I'm going to become a developer. Okay. So I have this very simple application. It's an Hello World application and it's in Python and it's a Flask application. And as you can see, it's really simple. It just returns, a, returns an Hello World message on the home page, and I can customize that message with uh, an, an environment variable, okay? I have a Docker file that uh, packages that application inside a, a container image that I'm, I want to be able to deploy as a developer to different environments. So that's the part where we start with, uh, with AppCTN. So as a developer, I want to be able to deploy that application to the staging environment and to the prod environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is initialize uh, my application, okay, with AppCTL. So I run AppCTL init, the name of the application, and then I give it the address, the GitLab address of my application. So, Fair warning, and then so I'm just going to add that to my SSH agent, otherwise it's going to be a bit boring. Okay, and now it's asking me if I want to create the deployment repository. So that's a, a fully separate repository where all my full Kubernetes configs are going to live. And I'm going to say yes. And AppCTL is going to uh, create that for me. So on the top here, you can see that I have two new directories, the delivery one and the config one. So the config is the base Kubernetes config. So once again, we use customize for that. And the delivery one is currently empty. So I'm just going into that. And I'm going to now add my uh, environments, staging and prod. So I run appctl and add staging. I give it the name of the cluster I want, in which reg region it lives, and in which namespace I'm going to deploy my application. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing for prod. And now in my delivery uh, directory, I have my two, my two environments that, that are here. Uh, in the config, uh, in the config directory, so that's where my Kubernetes configs are going to live. I also have my environments. So if I look at this customization file for prod, we see that actually looks for configs in the base uh, directory, and that's currently empty because I haven't defined anything. So j just to make things quicker, I, I'm going to copy over some existing configurations, uh, and now we see that in the base, base uh, configuration, we have a deployment. Okay, so that's a very normal deployment uh, file for Kubernetes. 
The one thing that you're going to notice is that I don't have any image tag here, okay? And I have a service that's just creating a load balancer. And in my customization file, I say I'm using that deployment, that service, and I'm also overriding the, the image, tag that, image tag that I'm going to use. In that case, I'm just going to use 0.0.1. And if we take a look at our uh, environments, so we are still using the base config, but now we are overriding uh, each environment with a specific pad, patch. And in that patch, we're customizing, uh, customizing the message. In, in that case, since I'm in production, I'm saying hello production world, okay? So we're going to commit, tag, and push all of that. And because, as you may have noticed, I already have a GitLab CI YAML file that's going to trigger uh, a CI pipeline in GitLab CI. So I have one here running. And we have a couple of things here happening. The first ones that I want to show you are fairly standard. Uh, so I have a, a, a lint, linting job going on and a unit testing job going on. So if I just take a look at the linting, for example, it's, uh, it's just starting. And if I take a look at uh, the unit tests, it's currently running. It's a bit slower than usual, but that's okay. And once uh, those, uh, those finish running, they're actually, act, actually going to show the, the results here in GitLab CI. That's like a very nice feature of, of GitLab CI. And we can see here that I have a third test that just failed, validate. So let's take a look at that. So we have an error here that says that all deployments must have a team label. And that should ring a bell because that's the policy that we just defined in the first part of the demo as a platform administrator. It says that every deployment must have a team label. And I don't have a team label. I just showed you the, 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 the deployment file. I don't have anything here, okay? But how did that end up here? So it's actually fairly neat. So if I take a look at the previous job here, we actually downloaded all the policies directly from the Enforce config manage, management uh, Git repository, okay? And we're running our application configs against those policies to make sure that our application is compliant with the policies before it even hits any development or staging environment. And how did that end up in my CI pipeline? Uh, that's also fairly neat. If I take a look at my CI pipeline uh, here, you can see that I'm using the include feature of GitLab CI, where I just point GitLab CI to that secondary GitLab CI file that comes from directly from Enforce Config Management. So my platform team has basically given me a ready to use policy check for my application, okay? I don't have any job to define, actually you can see, I don't define the validate job in that, in that uh, GitLab CI file. I'm just using what the platform, platform team has given me and I can very quickly make sure that my application is compliant with any policies that my organization may have. Okay, so let's, let's fix that policy violation. And to fix that, I'm just adding the right labels, labels team, and I need it to match. Uh, I need it to match team dash something, hello world, for example. Yes, that's it. So I added the right label. I'm just going to update my tag here and I'm going to commit tag and push. Uh, push dash, dash, tags. Okay, so I have a new job, a new pipeline running. And uh, spoiler alert, alert, this one is going to succeed, okay? 
so while that's running, um, let's uh, let's move uh, let's move forward. So now that I have fixed my policy violations and that I have uh, successfully tested uh, my uh, my application, uh, everything is fine. I've built a Docker image. That last step here is building and pushing the Docker image. I can actually prepare my um, my uh, application to be deployed on staging. So for that, I just run appctl uh, prepare staging, and I just give it the tag that I want to deploy. So it's going to read from my uh, Hello World repository, check that I indeed have a, a 0 .0 0.0.2 uh, tag, and then it's actually creating a merge request. Yeah, you can see it, but it's not creating that merge request in the hello world uh, repository. It's creating it in the hello world deployment repository, which is a new repository that was created when I, I ran appctl in it. So let's take a look at that merge request. Um, so that merge request, once again, we are in the hello world deployment repository here, not the hello world one. So that's the repository used uh, to actually deploy stuff. So we're creating a merge request, we have a merge request to, to be merged into the staging branch because we want to uh, deploy to the staging environment. And uh, let's take a look at the changes. And I have my full deployment here, okay? And my full service. And you can see that I have my new tag and I have the, the custom message, okay? So let's merge that. And now I can, uh, has, has this finished? Yes, it has finished. And now I can actually run appctl apply staging. So that's going to take what's on my staging branch on the deployment repository and apply it on my staging cluster. Uh, and because this is a merge request, uh, we can uh, actually uh, uh, implement approval workflows for specific branches. So if I don't want anyone to be able to merge to production, I can just put an approval on that, use the code owners features, all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. We can actually, uh, once again, run tests on those configurations if you want at that stage. We can do all, all kinds of things. So um, AppCTL is now connecting to the staging cluster and is deploying my application. So if we get back to the GCP console here, we actually have uh, an applications page. And if we take a look at that, we have our Hello World application in staging, okay? With my two components, the deployment and the service. And I have my uh, version history. So I have a single version for now, but if I deploy another version, it's going to, to, to get here. And uh, if we take a look at our services and we filter by namespace, I have my load balancer that has been created. So it's going to take a couple of minutes to get initialized. So I'm not going to wait for that. And I'm going to move forward directly uh, to the production, the deployment in production. So now that I've deployed in staging, I want to deploy to production. So I run appctl prepare prod from and staging, meaning that I want to deploy the same version that I have in staging into production. So once again, it's reading references from, uh, from GitLab uh, to get the version that's running in staging, and it's going to create a merge request uh, for the prod environment. Actually, it tells you that it's going to promote prod from staging. And the merge request is now here. So this is once again a merge request for the deployment repository. Let's take a look at that. But this time, we're, uh, we're, it's a merge request for the prod branch because we're deploying to the prod environment. And let's look, look at the changes. We are indeed, indeed deploying the same version of our application, but we now have the production custom message. Okay. So let's merge this. And let's apply. So by the way, uh, this has my load balancer for staging has finished uh, initializing. So I 
my application is indeed running in staging with my custom message for staging. Um, so this is really uh, the, the end of the, the demo. Uh, we're just going to wait uh, a few seconds for, for that to finish. Uh, so what I want to, to say is that, so Enfo, Enfo's config management is really for uh, deploying config and policies. The main users of that are going to be platform administrators, but that's going to allow everybody to uh, collaborate on, uh, on config and policies, be it developers, platform admins, uh, security team, etc., using like the usual GitLab uh, workflows. Um, and AppCTL is uh, really uh, designed for application developers to deploy their app. By the way, AppCTL is currently a pre-release uh, product. It's uh, available on Google Cloud. You can access it, but it's not GA. And we are actively listening to user feedback on that uh, on that tool to make it better and 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 uh, more suited to the to the use of uh, application teams everywhere. And uh, while I give uh, the end back to Kurt, we're just going to. Uh, take a look at our prod environment. And that's going to take a few seconds to create. Um, thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you, Teo. Um, thanks for putting that together. Um, it was a good walkthrough. And, and really, let's break down a little bit what we saw. Um, yeah. So really, we're looking at Anthos handling GitOps, and we talk about GitOps since we're piecing together using Git and, and versioning of your configurations um, and manifests to really drive consistency in your operations. So it's more just like we create, we use version control in Git to create consistency around multiple people contributing to a, a, a software project. We can apply that and expand it to um, policy of deployments, um, versioning of deployments, environments for deployments. Um, and really we use Anthos to do that. And by putting Anthos um, kind of as the mid layer across all of our Kubernetes clusters, we get that consistent um, Git driven um, experience for managing changes to our configuration. And really we're using, um, so we have Git at the core and GitLab's UI and UX enables more um, features around Git. So we get versioning of files, but we also get um, from GitLab, collaboration around changes, as we saw merge requests, merge requests approvals, and then you know additional policies and tooling we want to place around specifically how we make those changes, how we implement those changes, who can approve those changes within GitLab, um, you know discussing what the nature of those changes are, being able to reason about um, you know in a centralized place what the implications of this change are and ultimately improve it or send those changes back for uh, further modification before they're approved. And, and by really implementing this declarative um, structure around all of our configuration, you know, we can extend this entire approach to, again, how we deploy and develop and release all of our applications. So configurations, policy, and security are all tightly bound in one place. Uh, and we have a very easy to follow audit trail of every change that's made, who made that change, who approved that change, when the change was um, introduced into production or whatever the infrastructure was. And that just gives us more clarity around what our DevOps experience is gonna be. We have transparency around all of the individual moving pieces from the, the changes in the application logic all the way up to the changes in the deployment infrastructure. And all of those live under one application and they're really typically just one click away from each other to, to dive down into the specifics of, of how we're changing and, and administrating and managing um, our entire open platform. So if you saw that and you're, you're excited about it or you're curious about getting started and, and diving deeper, we have a couple of different partners that are uh, well-versed in Arctic and we have a great relationship with um, as uh, between Google and uh, GitLab. And so we we'd certainly recommend reaching out to SADA Systems uh, and speaking with them. They're great partners um, within the Google uh, ecosystem and also Arctic, uh, very knowledgeable um, GitLab service providers and partners who can certainly help you get up to speed. Uh, and we also have uh, some additional resources in terms of really just links and other places um, to get a lot of this information um, that you can find either um, within our website, uh, on GitLab, within, um, you know, on Google, we have a 
some documentation around um, Anthos config management, how to implement Anthos, uh, managing your specific applications, how to leverage app CTL in a proper um, development pipeline. So as, as Teo mentioned, app CTL is, is available, but it's not a generally available stable release. So it's, it's um, certainly on its way to full GA maturity. Um, and it's currently at a, uh, at, a at a place in the development process where we're collecting feedback and looking how to implement and iterate on those uh, pieces of feedback to deliver uh, a real production level um, application. So I can uh, pause right there. We have just a few more minutes. We're happy to take any questions around what you saw in the demo today uh, or how to leverage GitLab and Anthos in tandem. All right. Thank you very much, um, Theo and Kurt, for your presentation and for the demo. Um, yeah, we still have a few minutes left for the Q&A. So I would say let's start right into it. Um, the first question that I have is um, what are the advantages of yeah, um, playing together Anthos with Terraform or Pulumi? And um, how does it work in the end? Is it working? Um, it depends on what you want to do with Terraform and, and, Terraform and Pulumi. Uh, so Enforce is really based on, 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 on Kubernetes. So you have many different, different parts of Enforce, but the core of it is always Kubernetes. And if you want uh, to use Terraform or Plumi uh, to manage resources within Kubernetes, within an Enforce Kubernetes cluster, that's definitely possible. Uh, and we have customers doing that. You can also uh, use uh, Terraform and Pulumi to manage uh, the Enforce resources themselves if the providers are available. Um, that's, uh, that's definitely possible. And, and for example, if you are using Enforce uh, on-prem, which currently runs on VMware, you can, uh, you can use uh, those, uh, Terra, the Terraform VMware provider, for example, to manage those resources. Um, so you have all the, the usual integration points with, that you can expect between those tools, basically. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, the next question would be, um, how do I get started with GitLab and Anthos? Um, really, you can get started with um, I think the easiest starting point is to uh, take a look at config sync. So config sync, if I go back here, config sync is that, that part of Enforce config management. It's, it's available for free, okay? You just go on the, the Google Cloud website and you search config sync, you, you'll find it. And uh, that's going to uh, be the part that reads configurations from Git and applies them to your Kubernetes clusters. Um, and that Git repository, uh, in your case, will be, will be GitLab. And that's going to give you a taste of, of all of that, of what it does. And once, uh, once you, you, you have that, you can move uh, further, uh, further uh, in with policy controller, with config connectors, and those, those other parts. And of course, uh, the main recommendation uh, for an Enforce deployment and for like, a successful integration with GitLab and everything uh, remains to uh, to one reach out to uh, your Google and GitLab contacts, and also to the partners uh, in so Seda and Arctic are the two main ones that uh, have both knowledge of GitLab and Enforce, but you have other partners available also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we have uh, one last question. Then, uh, yeah, we are unfortunately running out of time. Um, Enforce config management seems powerful maybe even too powerful. How can I prevent people from pushing whatever they want into the clusters? Uh, very good question. Um, so uh, actually yesterday, uh, Google Cloud introduced a new notion called environs, which allows you to group clusters by environment um, and to apply. So instead of syncing all your clusters on the, to the master branch at once, the, the, the idea behind that is that you're going to say, okay, my production clusters, I want them to synchronize on this specific tag or this specific commit and all my non-production clusters onto that other tag. And then, so that's the first, uh, the first place where you can control what gets applied where exactly. 
And then uh, you can use all the powerful features of GitLab, uh, some of which we showed today, to actually control who can merge onto those branches at which time. So approvals, uh, the approvals in a merge request is one such feature, but you can also use, for example, the code owners feature to, to say, okay, all the changes to my policies and my policies live in that specific directory, I, I need to have an approval from that team. All the changes to that namespace, I need an approval from the team that owns that namespace, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I think yeah, as the time is running out, uh, we would have to make a cut here. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, for the detailed demo, Theo, as well, and for answering the questions in the end. So uh, thanks for being here, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.